Was it advertised on Zoom? Uh, I didn't see no, it. No, we didn't, we didn't advertise on Zoom this time. Oh. We may not. Uh, oh, just. <laughs> 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 Still pretty close to the Okay, good. Uh, it's really nice to be back here in person uh, and to have uh, Elias to talk about home spaces without joints. Uh, thank you. Thank you. So it's, it's a great uh, pleasure to be here after. Uh, such a long uh, time and uh, you know since this is actually I don't know I, I thought this was the first uh, in-person talk but I just learned that Yuris was giving a talk in the no, summer no, oh it was on Zoom okay yeah, so, yeah. so yeah I see because I I didn't know about the talk uh so, so you know we, we, we had we had some advertising oh, <laughs> over the summer I was the only one okay <laughs> you just wanted to keep the speaker for yourself <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, so you know, basically, I thought that, that you know, it would be nice to give a nice talk, uh, you know, as a for a beginning. I know what is uh, the most horrible thing that one can do is uh, give a perfectly polished talk uh, with some spectacular theorems that's going to intimidate everybody. Well, I'm not going to do that. So, so uh, this is a work in progress uh, with uh, Bruce Blackadar and uh, Asaf Karagila. Now, I guess uh, some of you know one, some of you know the other. Okay, I know both, obviously. Uh, and it is about uh, choiceless uh, Hilbert spaces. So, so the way it started was uh, that uh, Bruce emailed me late in June uh, to ask some question about, uh, basically suggest that certain uh, non-trivial open problem in uh, operate algebras uh, maybe has a cheap solution in a model in which axiom of choice fails. Uh, I said, well, I have no idea, but there is this uh, Israeli British uh, set theorist who knows everything there is to know about axiom of choice, so why not uh, involve him? And then, of course, you know, Asaf was basically uh, just producing all sorts of weird models uh, that, that we needed. And uh, so far, that was the work. There is no non trivial uh, set theory in uh, this yet, but I'm still pestering Asaf to, to produce models with some. Uh, uh, interesting statements. Um, right. Now, I should start to talk with a joke, of course. So, so what, what better source of jokes than uh, Arne Miller in set theory, right? So, so, so we all know that that axiom determinus implies negation of Kutnino hypothesis. And uh, some years ago in that uh, other room across the uh, hall, Arne was giving a talk uh, about uh, some, some choiceless model. And he said he was uh, talking to a postdoc and said, well, you know, this is, uh, you know, because statement was something obviously false, uh, if you assume axiom of choice. And then Arnie said, oh no, but I'm not assuming, oh, why is nobody, okay. You see, this, this was a test to see whether you're listening. You're not listening. This is not about CH, not AC, right? Um, and the CH depends how you state it, right? So it implies it or, or doesn't, uh, depends uh, what you think of CH. So, so anyway, uh, so, so uh, uh, well, when finally Arne explained that this is a model in which axiom of choice fails, then postdoc suddenly lighted and said, ah, great, I love axiom determinacy. So, so from there, one can conclude not only that AD implies not AC, but actually not AC implies AD, at least in minds of most that theorists, uh, which uh, for, for the young people here is complete nonsense. It doesn't. I mean, th there are many models of uh, not AC in which AD fails. But but uh, if you look at uh, statistically, uh, if you run uh, into model in which uh, axiom of choice fails, uh, it's probably going to satisfy AD as well. Um, uh, okay. So so I should get to to mathematics. By the way, as I said, you know, this is a sort of a very informal talk. So, so please feel free to interrupt to ask questions like uh, what are you talking about. If I write not ch and things like that. Uh, um, so uh, uh, basically, as I said, uh, this started with a non trivial uh, question operate algebra that was suggested. I'm not even going to say what that is because it turns out that it has a very stupid answer uh, without continue, uh, axiom of choice. Uh, without axiom of choice. Uh, so I'm not even going to go there. Um, but yes. Yes, 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 please. Something like this, I said, uh, okay, so you, you, you can prove that uh, AC is a counterexample, AC doesn't. So the question is, how about you find a multiple? Take that. 
Uh, of course, you have to define definable, uh, but uh, I doubt. No, 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 no. These things are going to be horrible, undefinable. So you'll see once I get to 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 saying what sort of sets we are considering, no way. So so uh, no. No of what? Whatever weird thing you're kind of so you don't know what you're asking. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's wait to see. I didn't think about it, but no, let's uh, just just uh, uh, wait to see. So, so basically, uh, this this was not motivation, but but then at some point I thought, well, this is fun. So so why not uh, you know why not talk about quantum cardinals? Right, so, so so we know what uh, cardinals, uh, you know, what definition of cardinal in set theory is, right? So x uh, and y have the same cardinality if and only if there exists f that maps x to y, which is a bijection, and also, uh, I'll write it. Um, I don't want to put a cardinal signs, so I'll just say x is less than y uh, to mean cardinality of x is less than cardinality of y uh, to, to, to uh, simplify this. So these are definition, if and only if so there is function f from x to y, which is injection. You can also look at uh, when there is a surjection from y to x, but that's not as interesting uh, for, for what I want to do. Now, uh, Okay, so, so we know how cardinalities behave. Under axiom of choice, everything is uh, equinumerous to the cardinal. So, so it's kind of, uh, I wouldn't say boring, it's very interesting, but, but, but you know, it's, it's, uh, we know what's going on. Now, uh, what would a uh, quantum cardinal be? Well, uh, uh, and, and you know, this is not our invention. Basically, it goes back to, to von Neumann, uh, that it really, uh, you know, in, in um, quantum mechanics, uh, the, the quantized version of a set is a closed subspace of a fixed uh, Hilbert space. Uh, now, uh, to talk about that, you have to fix an ambient Hilbert space. You know, most of the time you just pick a, your favorite separable Hilbert space, they're all the same, and look at the closed subspace of that. But here we are actually looking at arbitrary Hilbert spaces uh, and uh, thinking of them as corresponding to sets. Now, uh, do I need to remind you what the Hilbert space is? Okay, so no, nobody seems to be there. Is no 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 motion up and down as far as I can be. Uh, exactly. So they are not going to be separable, but but uh, for a silly reasons, uh, no, no, not that they're going to be uncountable. Uh, you know, yeah, exactly. So so okay. So 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 uh, if you have H and K. Wait. Uh, okay. So so it's a Hilbert space which is non-separable. So, so you know what's non-separable. So I should remind you what is Hilbert space. Okay, fine. So, uh, so H, uh, okay, so it's a vector space. Now, uh, typically in operator algebras, you want vector space over the complex numbers. Here, it's not going to matter. So it's vector space over R or C. Really, uh, it's not going to make any difference from what they're talking about. Uh, with an uh, inner product, All right? So what is an inner product? So it is a function that maps, uh, ah, okay, I should have made my mind. Uh, R or C is going to uh, be called K. So if I just say K, it's one of these. So it maps, uh, maps uh, H square into the complex number and it is inner product. So it's a linear in the first coordinate, uh, conjugate linear in the second one, at least if you're talking about complex numbers, if you just want reals, it's linear uh, and uh, it, it's a conjugate symmetric uh, if you do this. Uh, and uh, right, so it's, uh, I mean, the, uh, the silly name is sesquilinear. Uh, which uh, in Latin means one and a half linear. <laughs> so, so, you know, one uh, is, is the first part and half linear is conjugate linear in the second um, uh, coordinate. Um, and uh, the, the, you know, you do define a norm, a norm of vector C, two norm, 
uh, is you just take inner product of C with itself and take square root, right? And uh, also we require that uh, inner product of a vector with itself is zero if and only if vector is zero. And uh, one more thing, and now this is a contentious uh, bit. So, so, so all of this so far was just algebraic, basically there was a uh, axiom of choice is completely relevant. But one more thing, uh, we want H to be complete. So H is complete in this matrix. Okay, so I have to go back to, to, to what, ex actually no, maybe I should um, uh, clarify it right now. So what does the complete matrix space uh, mean? Well, of course, I guess gut reaction for most of us is that uh, if you have a Cauchy sequence, then Cauchy sequence has a limit. Well, that's a wrong definition. Uh, in this context, uh, that, that's too fine because uh, you know these, these spaces are going to be uh, non-separable, but they're not even going to have a very non-trivial sequences of vectors in them. So, so uh, if you define it that way, then, then all sorts of silly things are going to be complete. Um, uh, I mean, you can have a, anyway, so it, it will be horrible. So, uh, so, so I'm going to change this. So uh, Bruce called it. Yes, you can, yes, you can. But you see, you can have, uh, you know, subspace uh, which which uh, doesn't have right to be closed, and I'll say why. But uh, such that no Cauchy no, no Cauchy sequences in that subspace converges to something outside of the sub subspace. So so it looks like it's closed, but it's not closed. So you know you don't want to. No, it's not on trivial, but but uh, just uh, you know I'll, I'll actually I'm going to give example later on of, of something uh, that that uh, doesn't have right to to be called complete, and yet every Cauchy sequences in that subspace converges. Uh, so it's sigma complete. Uh, some people call it Cantor complete. Uh, Bruce came up with this. I don't know. It's somewhere in literature, I guess. I don't think he invented it. I mean, sigma complete would be a bad thing to, to invent. Anyway, so if uh, sigma complete, and this means if Fn, including Fn plus one, including so on, are closed. and their diameters converge to zero, then their intersection is non-empty and automatically it has a single element because the diameters converge to zero and that single element is, 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 a, is a limit. So, uh, okay, so now I just basically derived my, derived my talk and then I'm going to say a few things that I did not want to say right now, but, but uh, now it's, it's a good moment to say it. Um, so, so here is one, uh, um, uh, you see, this assumption suffices to, to uh, develop theory of uh, Hilbert spaces as we know it. So for example, one of the key things about Hilbert space is that if you have a closed subspace, then there is a projection to that closed subspace and it is a bounded linear operator of norm one. Um, and, uh, you know, the key behind that uh, and, and many other properties of uh, Hilbert spaces is the following. So lemma, uh, if H is a Hilbert space, then for every closed, of x c subset of h there is c in c with the property that the two norm of c is less than the two norm of eta for every eta which is in c other than c itself of course so so uh, what that means and you see here it is crucial that uh, c is just a closed subset, it, it's not compact. So it can be a subspace, just a subset. So uh, if you have C like that, and for example, if you have, look at zero outside of it, then there is the closest point to zero in all of C. All right, so this is um, 
uh, the property that is used to, to define projection because you know, if you hear a subspace, you hear a vector, you have this closest vector that, that's your projection. And you just check it's linear. Um, uh, so, so, and uh, how do you prove this? Well, exactly the proof last time you taught uh, whatever real analysis, uh, essentially uh, you produce a set like that, but then for some reason you just choose uh, vectors inside the old sets. You just don't have to choose them. <laughs> so their diameters are going to zero and you just intersect and you get a single point. Uh, so, okay, so corollary. No single point, yes. So this is the property of Hilbert space. It's really about uniform convexity. I mean, Banner space, which have this property, which are uniformly convex, uh, they have this property. Uh, and, you know, some spaces like L infinity doesn't have, you, know, you, have, you have a straight line, basically, yes. Right. But, but your geometry here is basically, you know, I mean, it looks like this, right? So, so it's really, this is what Hilbert spaces are about. It's, it's, a, it's a Euclidean space, uh, but big one. Um, right. So, so, so corollary. K, a subset uh, of H is a closed subspace. Then you have projection, but uh, I'm going to slightly, slightly, slightly different than uh, the K orthogonal, right, which is all eta, such that uh, inner product with eta of eta with C is zero for every C in K. Is okay. It's a closed subspace. That that's easy. But more interestingly, uh, H is really just a direct sum of these two. So every vector in H can be written uniquely as a sum of vectors in these two spaces. So 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 um, uh, so, so it behaves reasonably. Anyway, so uh, what I did want to say is um, talk about. Uh, want to cardinals, but now just my, my blackboards are messed up. Okay, so I'm just going to, to go to, 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 to here. So, uh, so sets with relations equinumerous and uh, smaller cardinality. Now, uh, what are, let me find it. So in Hilbert spaces, uh, yes, definitely, definitely it means that, yes. It means, which is the same as having countable orthonormal basis, right? If you have countable orthonormal basis, just look at rational uh, convex, rational linear combinations, it's a countable set again. You don't need AC to prove that. So, so it's really all about the cardinality of the basis, which is going to be one of the points uh, over there in a moment. Uh, okay, so, so uh, how do we define equinumerous? Well, exactly, you know, the way that von Neumann defined it. So, so we say that uh, H and K, are of the same quantum cardinality, if you want, uh, if and only if there exists U, which maps H into K, uh, which is a unitary. You know what that means? U adjoint U is just the identity on H, and U, U adjoint is the identity of K. I mean, think of U adjoint here as, as the inverse of U, right? So, so that there is isometry uh, between spaces, they are in the same space. Now, and, and what does uh, H less than K mean? Well, it's if and only if there is a V, for some reason, isometry is always called V, uh, V from H to K isometry. I, I'm not saying linear isometry, but of course it's linear, those are, uh, vector spaces. Uh, so, so what this means is uh, that, uh, that, that, that U st uh, sorry, V. V star V is equal to the identity on H. All right, so in other words, H is just uh, isomorphic to a subspace, closed subspace, okay. No, it's not, no, no. No, it's, it's just literally H is isomorphic to a subspace, okay. Uh, nothing. Yeah. So, well, oh, I see, I see, I see. Okay, I should have written last week. I see what you mean. Yes, yeah, so, 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 no, I, I don't want to. I mean, then I would have to say more things, but, but then it gets messy. No, because you can be isomorphic to a uh, proper subspace and still be isomorphic to the whole space and, uh, you know. Uh, so, okay, so, 
the Hilbert spaces. Also with the same relations. Ah, well, one more thing. So uh, here is a fact. If X is any set, and now any set in this talk has a, a more a loaded meaning than it does normally in my talk. So, so these are going to be simply weird sets. Uh, then little L2 of X is a Hilbert space. Now, uh, what is little L2 of X? Well, uh, it is a space which has this canonical basis uh, which is indexed by elements of X. So it has a just write it actually no, right. Yeah, I right, just write delta. Delta X for X in X. This is orthonormal basis. And uh, L2 of X is just all possible sums of of formal linear combinations of uh, of the form lambda x delta x, where sum of lambda x up to the squared is less than infinity, and the inner product is defined uh, the usual way by product of, of two vectors. Uh, so uh, the sum lambda x delta x times sum I don't know, alpha x delta x is just the sum over all x's of lambda x alpha x conjugate. And now cauchy schwartz inequality, which again, like any inequality, I guess, doesn't require axiom of choice, implies that, that this is going to be finite if both of these vectors uh, belong to a Hilbert space. So, uh, so, so all that one needs to check uh, is that, that indeed uh, it is sigma complete, but that, that's straightforward, so, uh, so it doesn't match. Okay, <clears throat> uh, so, so uh, what can we say about uh, these? Well, uh, uh, let, let's see, so, so, so uh, if you have X equivalent to Y, that implies L2 of X is equivalent to L2 of Y. Basically, bijection between X and Y just extends to isometry. Uh, uh, does uh, the converse hold? We don't actually know, embarrassingly enough. So, so in other words, uh, we don't know whether if you give me a Hilbert space, whether it has, uh, wh whether all of its orthogonal bases have the same cardinality. Uh, uh, another thing, another question so is every H of the form L2 of X for some set X. And, and the answer to this one we know, the answer is no. So, so you can, now, now of course, when I ask question, I mean, uh, when I say no, I mean, uh, there is a model uh, of ZF without axiom of choice in which there is a Hilbert space without a basis. And uh, let me see, so I had another question. Right, and another question, does uh, L2 of X being of smaller cardinality than L2 of Y, does this imply that cardinality of X is smaller than cardinality of Y? It is smaller, uh, right? So, so from this isometry, can you somehow uh, get um, an injection from X to Y? And the answer again is no. So really you can have X, which now, now it doesn't mean cardinality of X is greater. It just means that it's incomparable. Like they, they, are, uh, they, they are funny uh, cardinals. Uh, so uh, 
No. It, it was interesting that there were lots of, lot of people questioning that um, some models of democracy would ask questions. But were these questions always about uh, democracy? What happens in the absence of AC? Yes, yes. Everything is completely trivial in, in presence of AC. No, 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 nothing completely everything disappears i mean it's, you know we'll see once i start defining uh, sorts of sets that we need uh, they're, they're quite uh, obscure uh, so, so it's really uh, we need actual choice to, to fail uh, horribly uh, so um, now yeah okay i just want to say a few things about uh, okay i didn't put anything in the sets uh, side uh, but a few things about uh, you know cardinal arithmetic so, so what is you know uh, if you have cardinality of x plus cardinality of y how you define it uh, you know, we take it as uh, basically disjoint union of x and y. Or you can do it here, right? So, so, so you can uh, just take direct sum of, of spaces h and k, and that's really sum of cardinals. Uh, for the cardinality of the product, you take product of sets. Well, uh, Hilbert spaces, oh, yes. Hilbert spaces with respect to this. So, so, so it's uh, you see, it's it's really uh, there. You know, uh, standard cardinals in bed uh, basically have this functor. You have, but okay, no, I should say right. So, so, so you have this functor x from L two of x, which is right to say it's a functor from cardinals to quantum cardinals. Uh, and under AC, it is it is um, isomorphism of categories. Right? There is nothing uh, happening there. But without AC, we don't know whether it's uh, injective. Uh, but, but, but we do know that it's not surjective. Uh, and also, we know that it doesn't preserve the order. So, so you know, it, it is somewhat funny. Right, so, so uh, what is, if you have a product, uh, you know, product of two cardinals, well, it's exactly tensor product. If you have H tensor K, I mean, if you look at L2 of X tensor L2 of Y, that, that's nothing else literally isomorphic to L2 of X plus Y. Uh, exponentiation is somewhat hairy to define, uh, but, but uh, never mind that. Uh, so let's, let's move on to, to actually uh, examples uh, that, that uh, we have. So, so uh, that the kind finite and such sets. So uh, definition, I guess this was one of the early uh, pairs of the axial choice. The one uh, X is, okay, I'll abbreviate DF for the infinite. If for every proper subset of X, Y is not equinumerous to X. Right? So there is no um, bijection from X to, to its proper subset. Of course, under AC, this is same as finite. Uh, and uh, there is um, one of the early uh, models by uh, Abraham Frankel. Oh, I don't know really when, probably 30s or something. I don't know the history, but, but uh, you know, if, if, ZF, if ZF is consistent, then uh, there is uh, consistency with ZF plus there is infinite uh, Dedekind finite set X. Uh, I should probably say a word about uh, how is this being produced. This was way before forcing. So what Frankel did is he took a set of uh, atoms. So, so uh, things which are not called sets, which don't have elements, but are different. And uh, then uh, looked at uh, permutations of, of the model and, and look at the group of permutations and somehow by using the filter of subgroups of that group, 
uh, define the model which satisfies all axioms of ZF, uh, but uh, in that uh, in that set in that model uh, X is uh, Dedekind infinite but not finite, basically um, you know only elements which are fixed by 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 those permutations uh, survive there. Now, uh, so as I said, I, I didn't. Um, uh, I, I'm not going to say anything about this, but I can do something better for any example uh, that you may ever want uh, here to see. There is something called choiceless grapher online. Here is https slash slash. Fine. Yeah. I, what do I know? Okay. Thanks. Uh, see that. But okay. I guess uh, this was not uh, anyway. So um, I guess anyone would have noticed. Um, I think this is inters.co. So uh, if you go there, uh, there are four hundred and thirty different statements uh, that, that uh, follow from axiom of choice, but uh, not from ZF. And then you can just uh, punch in any number of them. It's going to graph you graph uh, with implications, which one implies uh, which one, and then give you uh, references and whatnot. So it, it's a lot of fun. So, so basically, you know, I don't have to, to do any, any mathematics here. I'm, I'm just listing uh, sets. So, okay, then I can find it. And okay, so any, uh, right. So whenever I say that I can find it, I mean uh, that I can find it and infinite, right? So, so, so uh, convention. Uh, that it infinite means df plus infinite. Now the next one, uh, sometimes called strongly that it infinite, but uh, following a sub, I'll call it coin finite. After Paul Coin, so you see, Coin uh, took uh, Frankel's construction and said, "Well, okay, we don't really want uh, these or elements. We want uh, you know proper model which has extensionality. So you just add infinitely many coin reals and uh, do permutation model from there. So you're getting infinite sets, uh, uh, you know, infinite but uh, weird uh, sets uh, of of reals. So X is coin, and and the, like this one, uh, coin finite. If not just X, but even." Family of finite subsets of X is that they can find. So, so this definitely implies that, that, that uh, X itself is that it can finite. Uh, it also implies uh, that, that uh, I mean, it's equivalent to saying that there is no strictly increasing uh, sequence of, of finite subsets or that there is no uh, disjoint sequence of non empty finite subsets, infinite in both cases. Uh, and uh, so on. Now, uh, next weird thing is X is amorphous. If Y subset of X implies that either X minus Y is finite or Y it's finite. So all, all subsets of X are either uh, finite or cofinite. Again, you can get that. And, and you know, funny thing is that you can get combination of all of these at, at the same time. Uh, and, and there is more. So four X, and, and this is going to be important one. X is rigid. If uh, for every permutation, Permutation, I should call it something. Say permutation pi of x, uh, the set x such that pi of x is not equal to x is finite. Uh, one more strongly rigid If 
for every partition of x into, okay, so these are just indexed by something, j and j, x, j, into finite sets. Xj has exactly one element for all but finitely many j. Right, so, so there is no uh, interesting equivalence relation, all of whose classes are finite. If, if you break x up into finite equivalence classes, uh, all of them, almost all of them are going to be uh, just singletons. Okay, there is also strongly a morphos, which is all this. Uh, and uh, all of those things uh, exist. So, uh, Fine out here just means regular. Uh, fine just means, yes, exactly. Yes, yes, yes. The, 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 the honest, you know, orthodox uh, standard. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, okay. So, so let, let me just uh, say one. Uh, any questions? So, uh, okay. So, let C of X be all Y subset of X such that there are fn uh, finite subsets of x such that uh, y is okay if i write n then i mean those are natural numbers right so uh, y is union of fns right so all uh, increasing unions of finite sets now uh, clearly finite subsets of x are included in this, and this is included in the countably infinite subsets of X. But now, uh, if uh, X is quite finite, then, then uh, every set of this form is actually finite. So we have equality if X is quite finite. And uh, that already implies a lot uh, about uh, the, those uh, spaces. So, so what is consequence? Lemma. If X is finite, then for every vector C in L2 of X, it's support. C, so what is support? Well, uh, just the set of uh, non zero coordinates. So it's set of all those x such that inner product of C with delta x, which is just a Fourier coefficient, if you will, is non empty. It's finite. Now, why is that so? Well, you see, um, The normal C, let's say normal C squared, uh, just, uh, just just to to, you know, to keep it simple. So it's sum over all x of all those squared, and it's finite. So if you give me any fixed epsilon, at most finitely many of, of these guys can be greater than an epsilon. So support. Uh, is union of an increasing sequence of finite sets. But uh, such a sequence has to stabilize. Okay, so so this already starts looking weird because you see you have this, uh, this uh, you know, Coin finite set, and it's even set of real set of coin reals in some uh, uh, symmetric model. Um, and uh, L2 of X is an infinite dimensional Hilbert space, uh, but, uh, and it's Hilbert, it is, it is sigma complete, but every vector is uh, finitely supported. So it's really inductive limit of finite dimensional Hilbert spaces uh, such that nothing happens uh, at, at the limit. You're not adding, you don't have any Cauchy sequences at the end. Uh, all right, so 
So let me just see. I think next thing is is a long uh, theorem with many equivalences. So maybe I should use a new blackboard. Uh, somehow uh, this notion of coin finite uh, turned out to be the one for which we could prove uh, most uh, results. Uh, so here is the position. Is this visible? Feel good. Thanks. Um, so uh, for uh, every x, the following are equivalent. One. X is coin fine. Ah, uh, let me see. So, so actually, just have to be slightly careful here because, uh, right. Uh, yeah, okay. So, so you see, I, I just said before, oh, okay, actually, <laughs> luckily. Uh, so, so I said that that it's infinite means that it's infinite and infinite. I thought I said that coin finite means uh, coin finite uh, and infinite, but I didn't. <laughs> no, in this theorem, uh, to, to make it true, uh, I, I have to say coin finite not necessarily infinite, or perhaps finite. Of course, finite case is boring, but uh, but yeah, coin finite. So uh, two. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Every C in L2 of X has finite support. We just saw one implication, and the other one is difficult. C, every sequence CN in L2 of X has common finite support. Right, so everything that happens happens inside finite dimensional subspaces. Four. Every sequence of disjointly supported vectors is finite. And uh, five. The closed unit ball. of L to X is sequentially compact in norm. Right, so all of these are uh, trivial statements for five dimensional equilibrium spaces. Uh, and they're not, not difficult to prove really uh, in, in uh, uh, in coin finite case. Uh, so let me just see if, if any of, of the implications are actually interesting. So uh, you already saw that that uh, one implies two, it was done uh, on the... Uh, not compact, definitely not compact because, um, because you know, you have, uh, if, if you look at, um, uh, Basically, you can find a big family of closed subsets uh, with finite intersection property, but uh, but uh, empty intersection. Uh, just look at at you know L two of y for y cofinite subset of X, right? There, unit balls they have finite intersection property, but but intersection is you just have to go a long way <laughs> to, to to get an empty set. Yes. Um, uh, let me see if there is. I don't think that any of these uh, implications really interesting. It's more than that. The statement is is kind of. Uh, uh, funny, you know, basically, I mean, for example, uh, if you have an infinite sequence of disjointly supported vectors, uh, you can uh, just make sure by, by, you know, dividing them by appropriate constants that the, the nth one has norm two to minus n, you just add them up 
uh, get a vector which has finite norm and you will contradict two and so on. So basically this is all uh, just uh, playing uh, with, with, with the definitions, uh, but, um, but, but there are more interesting things that I want to, to get to. Oh yes, right. So, so I promised uh, to give you a space. It's not the case that every infinite sum would wish to at least support a vector. Well, I mean, every finite sequence which wants to support a vector is finite. No, no, that, no, that, that's you easy. You have a set which is simply not enumerable. Ah, a sequence. Okay, so by, by sequence I mean uh, sequence. I mean uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. So Se sequence means sequence. Yes, yes. I know. That's what I'm <laughs> right. Thanks. 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 Yeah. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. No. 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 Definitely not because you can. You can just look at delta x, right? So you, uh, just look at things. Yes. But thanks. Thanks. So so sequence always means uh, sequence. Right. Uh, okay. So um, I see. What do you want to say? Oh yes. Right. Um, so, so I promised uh, to get uh, space without a basis. So uh, what I'm going to say first is a false try. Actually something that we don't know whether it works. We'll come back to, to something that, that does work later on. Sorry, which one? Oh, uh, let's see. Well, uh, if you have, uh, if you define completeness in that way, uh, then you get more Hilbert spaces. Okay, so for example, actually, now that Jim mentioned this, so here is example. I think this is going to answer a question ultimately. I'm, I'm uh, just basically uh, saying uh, something funny. So let's see. So if X, I think uh, quantum finite, uh, if X is quantum finite but infinite, then the following space, K, let's call it KX, KX is set of all vectors of the form sum lambda X delta X. Right, so in L2 of X, which have the property that sum of their coefficients is zero. Uh, this, uh, this space is dense. In L2 of X. So it, it's not closed. Uh, however, it is uh, Cauchy closed, right? If you have a Cauchy sequence, yeah, that's uh, clear. So, uh, so, so, so basically, if you take that definition, you get too many uh, spaces that, that claim to be Hilbert spaces, but are not. And actually, you know, what fails? I think I raised it, but but this uh, closest vector property fails. Uh, and and you know, without that, your hands are tied. You don't have orthogonal complement. You don't have projections. No, I mean, there is no projection from, from uh, whole space to this. And uh, theory just looks horrible. So, yeah, I guess the answer is basically why, why, why would you care? <laughs> so, um, right, so, oh yes, right, so, so. so oh, it's, it's no, not, not obvious, it's not obvious. Um, let me see, so, so, so basically, Okay, so <laughs> you see, I, I, I'm, I'm not giving proof that I intended, but that, that's okay, right? So, so, um, so fix, fix uh, C in L2 of X. Well, C has finite support. Right? Even a single for that, you get close to a single for giving the sum of. I'll, I'll, I'll get close to C. I'll get as close to C as you want. So, uh, fix uh, C in L of X. Okay, so that then, then support. Oxy is finite. And okay, you fix epsilon. Fix epsilon greater than zero. Now, uh, okay, now, now I can draw a picture. I guess it's probably going to be easier. So, so, so here is, uh, this is X. Here is, hmm? yeah, you see. No, 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 they are uh, yeah, just now, exactly. right? So, so basically, I can find uh, as large a finite. Oh, no, 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 you asked. No, 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 you have to listen to this. No, sorry. 
So if you pick you know, some very large M and you can find a very large uh, set here and uh, just put a very flat vector here. Just you know, put some tiny coordinates there and you can make sure and also make sure that, that, that they add up uh, you know, together with, with coordinates of, of uh, C, this adds up to zero and this has uh, as small norm as you want and you get uh, that, that C is within epsilon of something uh, in that subspace, which is idiotic, but you know, that's uh, uh, right. So, so what I wanted is yet another funny set that we haven't been able to really uh, um, uh, take advantage of. So it's, uh, it's sometimes called Russell's socks, but apparently Bertrand Russell was talking about boots. Uh, so, so uh, what is the story? Well, you have countably many, now it's three count sequence. You have countably many pairs of two element sets, whatever they are, um, and uh, there is no choice function. You cannot choose one of the socks from each of the sets simultaneously. Right, so, so, so it is uh, just union over all n of xn, each xn has size two, uh, but uh, there is no choice function f from n into the union of x n, and this is our set x. Now, uh, look at L2 of x and uh, look at the following subspace of it. So, so uh, for n in n, uh, define a vector, let's call it en. Uh, it is, I just have to normalize, so I'm multiplying by one over square root of two. And now uh, this is going to look funny. Uh, sum over all x in, in the nth piece uh, of uh, delta x. Now this is sum of two vectors, uh, but I cannot write uh, delta x one plus delta x two because I don't know which one, there is no x one, there is no x two. So the only way to, to treat this is, is sort of amorphously as, as some, some um, blob, right? So, so these are orthonormal. So ENs are orthonormal. And now, uh, actually, this is going to give me one of the examples. Uh, if I look at uh, the closed span, if I take K to be the closed linear span of EN for N in N, this is norm closed which is literally just that. Uh, it is simply our uh, you know, standard Hilbert space. It's isomorphic well to N. Right, so it is, this is a separable Hilbert space. And uh, clearly K embeds into L2 of X. Uh, but uh, L2 of X, Let's see, I think we proved that L2 of X is not separable. I think we did. Huh. Okay, uh, it escapes me. But, but uh, so, so question is, does, does the orthogonal complement of K uh, have a basis? It does. Okay, so as I said, I'm, I'm going to try this talk, uh, to make this talk as uh, unintimidating as possible. I completely forgot why L2 of X is not uh, just uh, isomorphic to, to, to the standard L2. Okay, so I'll, I'll just uh, leave it at that. And- uh, Can you reduce the other question about- Exactly, so, so, so oh, but I, I claim that I solved both, not I, I mean that we solved both questions, but but, but now I don't, don't see which one or, or whether, uh, but yeah, one at least. Um, yeah, there was some reason, but, uh, but yeah, okay. So let's go to, uh, no, I want to get to two more interesting things. 
So, uh, right, since, since I'm going to have to cut my talk short, I'm just going to, to add one more equivalent. It was supposed to come at a later theorem, but, but uh, in this theorem, Uh -huh. uh, there is six, which says every orthonormal basis. Uh -huh. Yes. So in polynomial model, where you have this choice of pairs, can, I, I imagine it's also true that it's, uh, there's no choice function even for infinitely many. I think that's true. Yes. So, so we are going to need. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah, oh, I so, so this would imply that is it more correct that the orthogonal function consists just the finite support vector. Because as soon as you have support, then you have a choice function, right? It was two things with different uh, with different values, at least in the real case. Yeah, but you different. have to work for that, you know, because their supports can overlap several of those two element sets and things get messy there. So so, so that, that, that's what we thought. Uh, but but if I understood uh, what you meant, then it really gets messy because you know it's basically you no know, coefficients at any of these can agree, uh, but they disagree at something else. I mean, no, uh, if uh, if you just look at the obvious basis, then of course it's going to be the one with, with minus, and then you know which one is plus, which one is minus. Yes. But it can get messy, and we don't really know how messy. So right, so let me just uh, say this here. So every orthogonal basis is actually a Hamel basis. So it's, it's really a vector space basis. And it's really obvious because all vectors are finitely supported. So any vector is in a combination of, of, of basis vectors. Um, but, but it's uh, kind of funny. Uh, right. So uh, to, to actually get an example of space uh, without, uh, without basis, we need uh, yet another theorem. U to trust. I, it's not, not Lee's trust, of course. It's her father, John Truss. So, uh, yes. Oh. Oh, so so uh, don't take your daughter to protests uh, <laughs> until she knows. <laughs> Maybe she just just develops some sort of uh, um, yeah something. Uh, so uh, if ZF is uh, consistent, then so is ZF plus there is. Strongly amorphous. Uh, okay, I didn't know. I didn't, strongly. Okay, I, I should actually put it uh, because I didn't say what you. So amorphous. Strongly rigid sets Z. All right. So, so once again, every subset of Z is uh, finite or cofinite, and uh, for a partition into finite pieces. Uh, all but uh, finitely many of them are singletons, uh, and a set X, which is union over Z in Z of XZ, each XZ has cardinality two, and there is no choice function F. From Z into X. Now, now in this case, Yuri's question has uh, an easy answer, right? So, if you had, uh, you know, a Z, every subset of Z is either cofinite or finite. So, if I had an infinite subset of Z uh, with whatever property, that infinite subset is cofinite. And if you have a choice function for cofinite sets, you can just do something those finite domain. So, so, so this is definitely uh, about as horrible as as uh, these sets go. And um, uh, so, so, so basically the fact is, uh, so if X is as in there, then 
L2 of X has, has a subspace isomorphic to L2 of Z defined exactly like over there. Subspace, I should call it something. K such that uh, the orthogonal complement of K has no basis. And essentially the proof is what you already said. Uh, it's not clear whether uh, you know, some networks in, in, in this case, in that case, we just have much stronger assumptions so we can do whatever we want. No. Um, so the proof uses a lemma that that uh, that they're useful for other things as well. So uh, state lemma. If X is uh, coin finite, right? Remember, so it means that, that uh, the family of finite subsets uh, is, is the I can finite. Uh, and Y is M is set. And R is subset of the Cartesian product. It's a relation. And it's such that Okay, this um, vertical section, Rx, which is all y in y, such that x, y is in R, both that and the horizontal section, all x in x, such that x, y is in R, these are all finite. All x and y. Then, um, the, then the following holds. One. So uh, okay, I'm I'm using the same names uh, as there, but but they're, they're going to be different sets. I'll just call this Z. So there is some set Z, and there are partitions of X over Z in Z of X Z, and there is partition of Y over Z in Z into YZ, uh, such that R is just subset of these. And all XZ, YZ are fine. So, so, so what this says is, you know, if this is X, this is Y, we can just break them up into these finite pieces in a way that's going to make sure that it, uh, R is somehow localized uh, inside here. So two, uh, moreover, this implies that Y is also quite finite. So if, if there is such a relation, uh, y has to be quite finite. Now, proof is really uh, kind of uh, uh, you know, simple, like everything else in this book. Uh, so, 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 uh, what do you do? Well, just fix x in x and look at here is x here. X is here. Is x. And now look at relation. So this is Rx. Now look at all the y's here and look at their relations, all the Ry's. 
look at uh, the following f1 is x now uh, g1 is just rx what is f2 well union over all y in g1 of all r y what is g2 well union over all x in f2 of r x right, so now i'm looking at it, uh, this so basically i'm just saturating uh, taking a closure of this set so what i'm getting is uh, an increasing sequence sequence again uh, of finite sets it has to stabilize right and uh, you also see that that, that really uh, if uh, all right, so so so, uh, and so on. So there exists an n such that uh, for all m greater or equal than n, f m is equal to f n, and also g of n is equal to g of. Uh, actually, we don't know this yet. Well, no, actually, we don't. We know that as well because these sets are finite. So otherwise, by by pigeonhole principle, you would get uh, something infinite, and. Uh, so 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 uh so let's say that f of x is this f n. Well, uh these are really equivalence classes for any element of f of x. If I started with the same process, I would have ended up with the same same set. So you can just just basically take transitive closure of R. I mean, maybe that, that was the right way to say this. Take transitive closure into equivalence relation, and that equivalence relation has finite class. So that's really what I should have said. Uh but uh, okay, uh so you can show you. Right, so so uh, where are we? Right, so so, so basically, uh, this proves part one. So Z is with the equivalence classes, and Y is quite finite. Well, if Y had an increasing sequence of finite sets, you would just basically transfer it by R uh, by using this uh, to two X itself. Uh, Okay, so so back to the oh, the oh I erased one. Okay, um, uh, let's see. So, so uh, back to trusses set. Um, right. The proof. So recall. X is union over all Z and Z of X, Z, cardinality of which X, Z is two, and uh, Z is uh, amorphous and strongly rigid and therefore quite finite. So uh, K again, uh, so K is closed span of these vectors EZ, where EZ is one over square root of two, sum over x in xz delta x uh, suppose that b subset of k perp is uh, orthonormal basis and uh, look at the following set Look at R, which is set of all pairs uh, C Z in uh, B cross Z uh, with the property that C is non zero inner product with some X in, uh, in XZ. Well, uh, every vector in this space is finitely supported. So all horizontal sections of R are finite. Uh, similarly, by a little argument, uh, every vertical section is, is finite as well. So, so we have that. And now what that means, you can partition Z 
uh, into these finite sets uh, such that you know everything happens inside one of those finite sets. But now, because Z uh, is strongly rigid, uh, all but finite many of those sets are singletons. And that's exactly what we want. So my lemma, now Z can be partitioned into union of, uh, I'm running out of letters, I don't know, uh, T and T or some Z T, each uh, Z T finite. And uh, all but finitely many that T are singletons. Uh, and uh, what is the property? Well, uh, vectors in B span the subspace, uh, which is uh, given by ZT. So, and a subset of B spans this uh, L2 of ZT minus, uh, what did I call K? Right, so the orthogonal, okay. I mean, this is just a ah, okay. no fancy notation. So uh, intersected K perp. Ah, but but, but uh, this is a singleton. And, uh, you know, one vector looks like this. So because they are, so, so that there is only one vector there. And that one vector has to have coefficients. Uh, you know, one is going to be, Basically, if you're looking at reals, one is going to be plus one, one is going to be minus one. In complex numbers, you just have to split circle into two pieces. It doesn't matter, but basically those vectors are giving you the choice function. Just choose the vector which has positive coefficients on the basis. So, uh, so it's a contradiction. Okay, I still have a little bit more time left. And I'll do something that is close to what we actually started doing in the beginning. And about my favorite horrible object. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, as I said, uh, I think it, right, if you just look at these astral socks, it's much easier. We don't know. So, so the answer is I don't know. You know, basically, answer to any non trivial question is I don't know. <laughs> you know, we started doing this in late June, and uh, you know, each one of us was doing other things which are probably more, uh, you know, deeper. But, but, but uh, this was just a fun thing to, to start the semester. So, yeah, but, but yeah, I have no idea. So, so really, uh, right. So, uh, okay. Now, uh, if, if you somehow wander into uh, talk about operator algebras, then, then you know, if it's very uh, general talk, then the speaker is going to define Hilbert space and just tell you, well, but Hilbert space is so horribly boring, forget about it. It's the really operators on Hilbert space that's interesting. Well, okay, now in choiceless world, operators are, uh, right, the space itself is not that boring, but really the bound linear operators is, is uh, where, where the interesting things are happening. So B of H, is set of all T which map A to H, H to H bounded linear operator. Right, and it was really the structure uh, of uh, these uh, algebras uh, that got us interested. Now, uh, okay, let me uh, define two more. Uh, K of H is all T in B of H uh, such that T is compact. Now uh, compact just means that, that uh, the image under T of the unit ball is non-compact. So in case of Hilbert space, uh, operator is compact if and only if it's in the norm closure of finite rank operators. In arbitrary binary spaces, it's not true. Nothing is true in arbitrary binary spaces. Um, uh, so, so this is a two-sided ideal. You don't need axiomal choice to prove that. Uh, it's also self-adjoint, uh, norm-closed. 
So, take a look at the quotient. B of H modulo K of H, right, the Kalkin algebra. Uh, uh, this is, again, uh, isomorphic to uh, algebra of operators on some concrete Hilbert space. So uh, this is fun. So uh, proposition by Kalkin. Who first consider this algebra? Uh, so okay, uh, for H equal to L two of n, P of H can be represented, namely it's, it's isomorphic to subalgebra of operators on L two of kappa. Now I mean in the AC world, so kappa is a cardinal, if and only if kappa is at least continuous. So you're starting from a separable Hilbert space and getting uh, this horrible thing. Now, now for a set theory, this is a triviality. Why? Well, uh, look, so, so if, I'll do it slightly more generally. So if H is L2 of X, X again is some possibly weird set, uh, then, Look at L infinity of X, all bounded, uh, uh, bounded sequence, not uh, uh, bounded set uh, indexed by X. Now no, I cannot use sequence in this context. So uh, let L infinity of X uh, embeds into B of L2 of X. Why? Well, uh, just think of bounded linear operators as these uh, giant X by X matrices. We just need to see what are the matrix coefficients. And these are just the diagonal matrices. Or if you want, just think of these operators which are diagonalized by the standard basis. So each of the standard basis vectors is, is, is an eigenvector. Um, right, so uh, this embeds. And also, if you intersect L infinity by the contact, you just get uh, C zero X. Right, so just sequences which converge to zero. So for any given epsilon, at most finitely many uh, of the coefficients are greater than zero. So L infinity of X modulo C zero of X embeds into Kalkin algebra, U of L two of X. All right, but now uh, uh, in Kalkin's case, he had L two of N. So what do we have? L infinity of N modulo C zero of N, right? So this is, uh, well, definitely one of my favorite uh, objects. Uh, it is just uh, continuous functions on beta N minus N. Right, or uh, if you like, it is the stone space of power set of N modulo finite. Actually, I could have put X here instead of, of N. That doesn't matter. But now the point here is that uh, over here, uh, of course, we have almost the joint family of cardinality continuum. That almost the joint family uh, gives us, uh, once you mod out uh, finite uh, things, it gives you continuum many orthogonal projections. And if you're in Hilbert space, uh, you need to find continuum many orthogonal projections while well, you need a really big Hilbert space. So that, that's really all. This was really Kalkin's proof. Um, okay, so, so, uh, so even for N, the Kalkin algebra looks horrible. What about, uh, oops, I should have kept this. Uh, what about horrible sets? Well, proposition, if X is quantum finite, then for T in B of L2 of X, uh, what can T look like? Well, remember all vectors are finitely supported and T is going to send finite uh, rank space, finite dimensional space, finite dimensional spaces. And we have that, that uh, lemma, uh, where is the lemma? Lemma over there uh, with this relation, 
which tells us that in that situation, because X is quite finite, uh, you can partition your spaces in, into finite blocks. So uh, for any uh, P in B of L2 of X, uh, we have partition of X as usually by some XZ. So it's each one of these is finite for every Z and each L2 of XZ invariant while even reducing uh, for T and for T adjoint. So, so what that means is that, that you know the, the matrix for T is just a block matrix. You just have this finite uh, uh, blocks there. So, so, so by the way, uh, the invariant subspace problem, uh, again, uh, it's really problem about uh, operators on separable Hilbert space. So on any other Hilbert space, uh, you have invariant subspaces, whether it's finite dimensional or, or horribly uh, uh, large uh, dimensional. Now, this is true not only for single operators, it also works for, for sequences of operators. You just do the same thing. Not sequence, sorry, for, for finitely many. For any finite set of operators, uh, you can uh, block out uh, your space like this. Uh, all right. And now uh, also another proposition. So if X is coin finite, then the compact operators in L2 of X are just all T such that support of T is finite. Right, namely T of delta X is zero for all but finitely many X in X. Right, so this is non quote. Uh, okay, so, so what does the Kalkin algebra look like? I should have said, uh, in this case, uh, Kalkin algebra is simple. Simple and purely infinite, if you, if you enjoy that sort of thing. But, but uh, you know, you cannot represent it at all unless you represent it faithfully. Uh, that's uh, one of the things. Now, um, so, uh, so, let's see. so we still have these uh, ugly sets, right? So I, I want amorphous, I want uh, strongly rigid, we see if, if X, uh, in addition to being quite finite, if it's also strongly rigid, then for every partition like that one into finite sets, all but finitely many of them are going to be single plus. So, so corollary, so if X is quite finite and uh, strongly rigid, Then for every T in B of L to X, there is T zero, which is compact to finitely supported such that T minus T zero is actually in diagonal. It's in infinity of X. Right, so once again, what is the proof? Well, first we apply that. We have uh, these blocks, but now blocks, just by, by definition of uh, strongly rigid, all but finitely, you know, many of them are singletons, but what that means, it means that corresponding delta X is an eigenvector. Uh, so, so therefore, the Kalkin algebra, is actually isomorphic to L infinity of X modulo C drag. So it's, it's a billion.
which is uh, fairly weird. Now, now, how big does it have to be? Uh, well, C zero x is about finite. Yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. So it's, it's finite. So basically, it's it's uh, exactly because you know compact operators are finitely supported. So C0x is yes. So it's the same thing, but it's complete. You know that, that that's what's 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 weird. Uh, so it's just an infinity module of finite has no right to be complete, but it is. Um, right. So it's a billion. How big is it? Well, uh, <laughs> now we can play with these definitions and just add the ingredients. So if x is also amorphous, uh, what does that mean? Well, uh, look at uh, operators in L infinity of X. If X is morphous, then for every T, in L infinity of X, there is a scalar lambda such that T minus lambda is compact. Right. Uh, why is that so? Well, uh, assume that that spectrum of, of T was, basically I'm proving that that spectrum of, of T is finite. Uh, if spectrum of T was infinite, spectrum of T, uh, it is set of, Real so complex numbers doesn't really matter. If it is infinite, well, a set of complex numbers cannot be amorphous. You can always split an infinite set uh, of complex numbers into two pieces. But then splitting it would be splitting X into two pieces. The spectrum has to be finite. And uh, also not only that, but only one of those eigenvalues has uh, infinite dimensional eigenspace. And that's a lot. So, uh, uh, okay, so 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 corollary is that if X is strongly amorphous, this implies that Kalkin algebra of L2 of X is isomorphic to L infinity of X modulo C0 of X, and it's isomorphic to our field K, let's say complex numbers. So, so it's one dimension. So you get uh, infinite uh, one dimensional uh, Kalkin algebra. Now uh, there is another case, and I'll finish there. So uh, if X is, okay, I have to say why this exists. Uh, strongly rigid, point finite, and set of reals. Uh, Asaf says uh, that Andreas Blas sketched a proof of, of this, that, that the coin's original set of coin reals in this permutation model has that property. You know, the, the point is strongly rigid. It's really, this is a non trivial bit. It somehow uses some, some you know, deep symmetries uh, of, of this. I don't know the proof. So if this is the case, well, then all this works, except for, of course, for this one, it is not strongly amorphous. But uh, the L infinity of X is quite big because you, know, you can just look at operator uh, which sends delta X to, to delta X times X. X is a complex number. So uh, then for Kalkin algebra of L2 of X, again, isomorphic to that, so is large and uh, in the billion. Hmm? Oh, uh, well, you see, if, if you have, if X is subset of, let's say, reals, I might as well assume it's bounded, right? So, so what is T, T of delta X is just X times delta X. Right, I'm using, right, so, so delta X uh, is eigenvector. I mean, this is your definition. My definition, yes, yeah. for every x. So I, I mean, I guess one of the things is that, that my, my x's are look the same, uh, whether they're big or small. So this one was small, maybe, maybe the definition. No, 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 so, so what I don't understand. So, so this, okay, so you've got a, t, what, why did you say this is that the, uh, 
Uh, oh, 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 yeah, okay, fair. Well, but, but you can just look at any real valued function. And, uh, okay, I mean, you want to polynomial states for minus. There are many of those. Is that the point? Well, there are many polynomials, right? I mean, so don't think you have to go from x to x? Than no, 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 because this is just the eigenvalue. KLR, I don't care. Right, I, I'm, you know, delta x is not going anywhere. So this is really uh, not about the structure of the Hilbert space. It's, it's, it's really staying inside L infinity. So, so, you know, L infinity is going to be huge, but, but the point is that B of L2 of x is going to be very close to L infinity. So doesn't it give you the first one? You just get L infinity of x? Yes, 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 you get L infinity, yes, yes. So I, I was just lazy. I was just lazy to write that, so, so yes. Yes, so, so it's, that part is the same, but, but uh, uh, just the punchline is different, right? So, so you have two quite opposite. I'm quite sure it's, it's non-separable, but haven't quite, uh, you know. Oh, it's yes, it's a billion. That, that, that's, that's the point. I right? saw so that, that, that common common part of the proof, uh, common part of the proof, yes. Uh, yeah, well, I guess uh, it's time to finish. So thank you. So. Um, yeah. You're new. We don't clap in this seminar. <laughs> this is uh, not, not my first time speaking here, trust me. You yeah. haven't seen me, but. <laughs> uh, no? yeah, sure, of course, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see, yes. <laughs> Need some training, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. So I was intimidating, yes. Uh, yeah. When you have the same conclusion, Yes. Well, different hypotheses, right? So in one case, I had strongly amorphous, uh, and the other case, I had that it's it's a set of real. So this is non-trivial. Yes. Yeah. Yes, but 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 if X is oh, I see, so I didn't say. So so if X is subset of R, uh, strongly rigid. So, so this is actually, I said it somewhere. Right, so, so yeah, no, I hate this. So read it, quite finite and set of reals. Yes, but, but, but uh, this is a uh, theorem of Andreas Blas that, that you can add that, you know, you cannot just add hypothesis unless somebody proved that it makes sense. Uh, otherwise your assumption is zero equals one. But apparently it's not true. Can you get like a very small set of permutations of the of the, of the x? How small? Well, when there's some sort of shift or something like that. Uh, if you have a shift, let's see, so you have all powers of shift. Well, no, but you see, it, 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 no, no, no. You see, if you have shift, then x is not, uh, it's not even that infinite. Because if you uh, just look at any point, right, its orbit is going to be countable set. Yeah. So you definitely don't have shifts. So do you need that it can find out the Well, uh, quantum finite implies that it can find it. Yeah. So it's, it's uh, you know. No, it's, no, there, there are there some, some sets X with some sort of non, non, non choice property that give you a bit more than this to still not very much. I, I guess, but, but uh, you know, question is what, uh, what more, you know, you saw there was this long theorem that I raised uh, that, that coin finite is equivalent to all sorts of, you know, just, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, Hamel basis uh, and whatnot. So if you don't have that, then, then okay, you probably have some interesting weird properties, but but uh, I don't know what they are. I think, let's say, if you're just interested in D omega or finite and mm -hmm. generalization, these results are it's not so interesting. Uh, yeah. But, but there, there might be. Some... There might be, yes. Yes, I, I, I have to admit, I never actually, uh, Asaf reminded me when he was a graduate student, uh, he told me he needs axiom of choice. I said, well, come on, why would you do that? Who is doing that? Uh, but okay, so so now apparently it's, it's a very popular thing. So uh, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I say false things. So. Well, for finite motion, can we uh, explain uh, how? Uh, well, there is that lemma uh, that connects quantum finite and Cartesian product, but, but is, if that's what you meant, uh, but I'm not sure. Yeah, just, uh, yeah, well, yeah. Another statement, but 
Okay, what what's the statement? No, I just said oh, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't see a natural statement in terms of products of uh, what with what. Oh, oh, oh that, that's what you mean. Ah, oh, um, yeah, uh, I don't. Well, of course, it's your choice fails. Uh, yeah, I mean, well, of course, choice functions high, but you want coin finite in particular. Well, you just need to, to somehow, you know, force it so, so that that product would be. Uh, um, would get you an infinite sequence, countable sequence. Yeah, I don't see it off the top of my head, but yes. Yeah, it, it is by, as you said, by, by, by definition, I mean, it, it, it's true, but uh, I don't really see how. how. Okay, so another tradition that we have here is that there is a coffee and cookies at three o'clock. So, so people get nervous if somebody goes for six minutes and 34 seconds over time. So. <laughs> okay, thanks. Sir.